Hello YouTube, my name is Nicholas Montez and you're watching my YouTube channel, The Teenage Mutant Critic. And welcome back to another YouTube channel, everybody. I'm so excited to have you all back to the beginner again. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a movie ranking. And we are ranking all five of John Krasinski's films. Because his new film that came out this past weekend, If, which stands for Imaginary Friends, came out in theaters. And I actually kind of saw a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started ranking all five of his movies. So now the Hollers, I don't even know what this movie was. It was just kind of a weird movie. It was kind of boring. I didn't care for it. So this one was at least kind of better where the interviews were kind of interesting, but other than that, nothing really particularly interesting of that. Now there's a major gap when it comes between The Hollers, Brave Interviews, and If. Pretty much every other film up from three to one, I think is pretty much great, good to great. And If, I think was a good enough little film from John Krasinski, I think. It, uh, a lot of people this weekend praised it as like a live action Pixar film. And you, you can kind of see some elements in there and that it doesn't begin with big action. But some people also, like Sean Chandler, my favorite YouTuber, when he reviewed it, he actually portrayed it as like a blockbuster from like the 80s or something. And in a way you can kind of feel like that, it kind of feels like that a little bit. It almost feels like E.T. In a little bit in some ways. And it kind of works. The imagination characters is kind of cool. And I like that he kind of brought a lot of funness with it. At the same time, the actual plot itself was kind of weird. But I think overall, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was nice to see all these fun, imaginative characters. And it was cool. Now, obviously... Everybody chooses the A Quiet Place films as the best John Krasinski movies, so um, most people say either one could be a number one, but I'm going with number two as number two today. And what I really appreciated about this second film is just the way that they were able to expand the story from the first movie. Where the first film was all about this small family and, and learning to be quiet, and you, you have them stepping on sand but now the dad's gone and they have a baby to take care of them so and now they have to go beyond the sand path that the dad left for them and what this film does so well is that this movie not focuses only on the family more but it expands a little bit more on the world where the film opens where you kind of get the start of the invasion on this little, on this little, on this little city in like, in like this Westview dystopian city, and like it, as you see, get invaded, but and you see how some relationships from that scene come back with Cillian Murphy. This was actually my introduction to Cillian Murphy, and I know that sounds kind of shocking because. He's in a lot of Christopher Nolan films. <coughs> Excuse me. And he's in a lot of Christopher Nolan films. And so I'm like, how did I not realize he was in these while watching these films? So that was kind of weird. And then, uh, and even all these other, they, they also create just great thrills. I remember seeing this movie in theaters back in 2021. And the... The jump scares that I had in this movie were crazy. I remember, like the when the first alien hit that car, I was just sitting eating my burger, which I snuck in from McDonald's, by the way, and I just jumped out of my seat. I'm like, "Holy shit!" Because I kind of knew it was coming, but it scared the living shit out of me. Because I'm like, the way that this guy was able to do it, and it's not just like it's scary; it legit scares you because he perfected sound with great thrills 
And that's just the masterwork of John Krasinski, where once again, he also makes you care about the family. That's why this film works so well, because it's just so freaking good. But in first place is, of course, the original A Quiet Place. Now, I forgot to mention my problems of why A Quiet Place 2 is at number one, and that's because I feel like there were some things that were just kind of weird in there. Like, why were these people hypnotized or whatever? Like, most people should just be dead. If anything, most people are just lucky to be surviving. We get in this movie, and... John Krasinski surprised us with one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Easily top 100. I mean, just the way that he was able to take tell a horror movie where it was different from a zombie movie, but also makes you care about the family and makes it like a smaller movie where every performance is great with John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. They're great. The depth sister, the, the brother, they're great. And the opening sequence kind of establishes everything that goes on within the family, and every character kind of has an arc, characters make sacrifices, and in a way, you still get all the great thrills that you want. And in some ways, most people could say, uh, that's part of the reason why like, they, they like the second one, because you get more of the great thrills. But I like the second one more, I like the first one more because of that family emotion. Because of that story, and because of that, the epicness of that ending. And the way it's going to set up in the third film. So, yeah, this was just a great experience. John Krasinski, keep making more great movies. I have utter faith in you. And that's my ranking of all John Krasinski movies. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.